Yeah, totally. So you were reading this morning. You you read over the Psalm 29. Yes. What do you think? Well, I, I think it is uh, really appropriate at this time to read. As a matter of fact, I looked in Nancy's Bible and she had written that the 29th uh, psalm is probably the oldest song. And that is something that maybe uh, would indicate that there have been wars, there have been different things in the world going on that are uh, turmoil. And mm -hmm. when the turmoil is over and the noise stops and as, as it says in there, the, the water uh, subsides and the deserts are uh, not tearing up things anymore. I mean, things are being torn up there like the, it said the forests are right. going to be bare. Right. Well, when that's all over, then it said the Lord is sitting on his throne. I guess his present to us is peace. Mm -hmm. And having lived through the 1940s as a young boy, I was nine years old when peace came in 1945. Yeah. And I felt that. It was like night and day, and those two days, things changed. That we were just getting over all the bad news for so many years. Yeah. And uh, we saw so many soldiers come through on the trains at, at the canteen. And it was just oh, yeah. turmoil for a long, long time. But all of a sudden, the joy was there. People were jumping up and down. And as a little boy, seeing these people all so happy, I thought, the world is going to be different now. Yeah. And it was. We've had other wars since, but living through that as a young person, I, I think that would be something anybody my age would remember. Yeah. And I see things now where the country's torn up with people saying bad things about each other, and, mm. and that's worrisome. I have faith that when you read that God had made the world mm -hmm. the way it was and, and there was turmoil, but it was over and then there was peace. I, I guess that if, if you are part of a congregation, I think people will have a better life. Uh, look what's going on in our town right now yeah. on the fund drives for people who are having problems the people you know that bring things over to your home, uh, like food, and it, this happened to us. Nancy was in the hospital for a week, I was in for a week. Mm -hmm. People brought things to us to help us. Mm -hmm. And I think that is part of what our church does. And you can almost count on it when you have a church family. I just have that feeling when I walk in that uh, my Saturday night, that that this is going to be helpful to me, that I can carry the feeling that I have to, at that time through the week. And I remember a sermon that Doug said that mm -hmm. you should uh, pray for joy. And I hadn't thrown that into any of my prayers, but after he said that, and it really made sense that uh, you pray for good things and all, but joy was un one thing I never prayed oh, for. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been taught there's a difference between joy and happiness. Yeah. What is, in your opinion, what's the difference between the two and why choose joy over happiness? Well, I think joy is a lifelong thing. It, you have it in you and happiness, you can go down and buy something and have that for 10 minutes. That may not be the right answer, but uh, I know some people that made themselves happy buying furniture at my store mm -hmm. and uh, then they'd come back in a year and want to buy some more and their husband would come in and say, don't sell any more <laughs> to us. Uh, oh. To me that was happiness, but joy, you see it on some of the people around the church, like the people that have come forward and say, we want to help with the flowers. Yeah. We want to help with your lawn. We want to help with the, teaching the kids and I'll be a uh, Sunday school teacher. Those, yeah. those things are, uh, I think, joyful things that are inside you that are 
I hope build up throughout your life and they're always there. Yeah. So, I'm, that's my hope right now. Yeah.